Yo, what's good with y'all, man? It's your boy to be wild, and I'm back again with another reaction. We got Hunter discovers 29 human body. That's crazy. In the desert, bro. We finna get into this, man. Uh, shout out to EWU, EWU Body Cam. We finna get right into this. He was about to make sure I'm the likes of all that good stuff, man. Without further ado. Is that an arm? Yes. It's still got skin on it. I hate to be indelicate, yeah. but. Uh, we got a call yesterday afternoon they had found an arm and a leg and then about an hour and a half ago we got a phone call from some deer hunters north of town and they found two heads. When the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office received a call about what appeared to be a human arm found in the woods, they had no idea that this was only the beginning of the gruesome discoveries. As more and more body parts turn up, Authorities can't help but wonder if they've stumbled upon a serial killer's dumping grounds, or if there's something else just as sinister at play. They found a total of nine legs mm. and several arms. On December 26, 2020, two Yavapai County Sheriff's deputies headed out to the woods south of Prescott. There they met with the two people who called authorities after stumbling upon something disturbing. This right here? This is crazy. Is it in a bag or what is it? No, it's laying right there. Okay. So look at we're we're just gonna walk along this fence line, just to this tree. Okay. Right below. Did you touch anything? Oh hell no. How close did you get to it? Uh, probably eight or nine feet. Okay. So stop wherever you stopped right before, okay? Right here. Okay. Back, I back the truck. I broke a couple of branches because I'm trying to get to that dead one. That's mm -hmm. down like that. Right. And that's it right over there. Okay. Yep. Yep, it is. You got crunching tape. Oh, I got it. Okay. Sure. Right, Let's go back to the car, you guys. Stay there. He's going to get a witness statement from you. All right. Were the fingernails polished? Did it look like a female's hand? I didn't look that close. See, we're not, we're, we're not going to get too close right now. I'm just going to get Mike and CI started. You need to call out CI. 10-4. Okay. Uh, so it is confirmed? Uh, in my opinion, yes. It's uh, I don't know if it's male or female or what, but it's definitely confirmed. For how much? We got about 10 feet away from it because we don't want to disturb any footprints or anything and we're going to be putting up crime scene tape. Um, I believe it's a leg. The officers then begin marking off the area. It's while setting up a designated crime scene that the deputies notice something particularly odd about the arm. Little did they know, this was actually an important clue about how exactly the limb came to be in the woods. There's like toilet paper on that arm. Yes, yeah, so too. Right. Did you only see an arm or did you see something else? No, Just no. that one? Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, then I told him about I seen a string of toilet paper on the road. Okay. The officer then gets statements from the witnesses who found the extremity, and they immediately share information about something else suspicious that they saw earlier. There was somebody that was heading up here when we were up here, and it's like he stopped because he saw our truck and then he backed out slowly. And I walked down here to see if I could see what car it was because it sounded like it was still idling right here yeah it stopped but i didn't okay. see it it was weird you know and i thought it was odd but there is a lot of principle so you guys didn't so you guys have been up here twice now he has yeah. i've been up here twice now despite the gruesome discovery the tone remains light the way this works is is i need all your most current information yeah, here okay. okay okay um i'm not saying it's a murder i don't know what happened you know what i mean um Bodies usually don't <laughs> yeah, stay for I'm not saying what happens. We probably are going to end up calling a lot of other people out. It's a pretty big arm. I think it might be an adult. Yeah. Yeah. While continuing to tape off the area to prevent contamination, one of the deputies offers some speculation about the arm. Yeah. Somebody that was camping and a bear got him. Is there a bear up here? The bear wouldn't leave the arm, and then take the other arm. If it was full, it might. It would come back. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. Is there anything back in there? He said there was more toilet paper this way, didn't he? 
That's crazy though, man. Like, to come across something like that. Because I, I seen on um, TikTok, it was like two guys, two different guys. They both found bodies on properties like where they were, I guess, like doing free cuts. They were cutting the grass or like trimming weeds and all this other stuff. They were just like cleaning up the uh, yard. And one guy found a body in a truck and another guy smelled like a strong odor coming from the house. And it was somebody deceased in there. It's just crazy to stumble, car, stumble upon stuff like that. Now, the one in the... Um, the house that could have been like a, you know, an elderly person, and maybe nobody called or whatever, so they did like a welfare check, <clears throat> and then they found him, and then the, I guess the other guy he did see the, the body in the truck while he was uh, weeding around the truck or something, and yeah, it's just weird. I, I, that is like crazy to stumble stumble upon. Yeah. That's the thing, though. There's toilet paper on the arm. That's freaking weird. All right, here, I'll go put it by the arm. No, this is about as far as we're going. going. There's that blue thing. Does it look like it got bitten yeah. off? Like it was chewed on or anything? Well, it's chewed on, like. well he says fresh. Who's shooting? Now that I'm closer, definitely not. Because now I can actually really kind of see the hand. Yeah, it's weird that there's toilet paper on it. And it walks, especially on the back end right there where you see that dryer sheet yeah. or whatever that is back there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if somebody tried to cover it up I don't know. or wrap it. Or? Looks like a dryer sheet. Oh, that part back yeah, there? Yeah, the, the part right there in the back of it. Looks like, like the stuff some other dryer sheets are made out of. But like on a roll, mm -hmm. there's more of it over there. Yeah. Yeah, let's just go this way. Another officer arrives soon after, That's and crazy. understandably, they can't believe what they're seeing. No. Knock, knock. Hi there. I'd love to show you what a K-12 powered school is really like. Now that I've looked at it, it is old, er, but it's still got skin on it. And it's weird, like they try to wrap the back of it with like some kind of dryer sheet dryer or fabric. And the fingers are all purple. I got pictures too. Um, I can't Is get that them. an arm. Yes, it's the right arm. He came. He backed his truck right up in here, and he was getting ready to cut this tree. And they saw that, and they got out of here. So they saw something else back in here, but I'm not going back in there to mess anything up. As it would turn out, the tree cutters were right, and there was more than one gruesome discovery still hidden in the woods. The very next day, the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office received another call. This time from two hunters. They too That's had stumbled crazy. upon something shocking. A deputy meets up with the hunters and has led to another chilling discovery. Down in there? Yeah, that, the, the heads are up here. It looked as lazy as whoever this was. I think they kind of threw some dirt and rocks and shit over right. in, the, in the ditch here. That's kind of where we had stopped and ate lunch. And I crossed this and I thought, ah, oh, it's just somebody dumping trash because there's everywhere right but then i walked across here up the hill right here so that and that okay disturbingly the hunters had found two severed heads and whatever else we haven't seen that that's what we found okay all right but with the coyotes and all that who knows what could have been here oh yeah yeah, I got a call into uh, Scott Poppenberger right now just to let their uh, carnivore attack team uh -huh. know just in case this being out here is put something in the air to call them out and caused any issues. So may have some, some cat action up here in a while. Despite the earlier speculation about a bear being responsible for the body parts and now possibly a coyote or mountain lion, the truth would turn out to be even more bizarre. When I tell these guys that I know that work for the sheriff's department, the police department, there's things you guys see that I don't want to know. This, this is one of them. Yeah, right here. This, this is it. <laughs> this is one of the things I don't need to know about. While conducting searches of both areas, police uncovered a series of strange clues. One of these clues led Lieutenant Bolts to making phone calls to try and trace the origin of the human remains. The first call he made was to a research company. Hi, how are you? 
I'm well. How are you? Well, we're a little perplexed right now. I'm a little perplexed by the message I read. I don't know if it's right. I uh, sounds like it is. Um, so we got a call yesterday afternoon from some folks who were out cutting wood, firewood. They said they found an arm and a leg uh, in the locations about 20, 30 miles south of Prescott. So we went out there thinking that we had a homicide and our criminal investigative division came out and they searched the area. They found a total of nine legs and several arms and then some other parts they think might be elbows or other parts they're not sure. Each of those body parts had a tag on it. Uh, they've all been collected and taken to our medical examiner's office, and we were planning on working on this on Monday. But about two, two and a half hours ago, we got a phone call from some deer hunters about 50 miles away as the crow flies, said they found two skulls on the ground. The common thread between the two is that the, the parts that we found yesterday and the skulls today, both of them, all of them have been wrapped in this blue and white, like surgical paper. We are all but certain that these are related. That's crazy. We're just trying to find out where they came from. Once you said it, we walked back this, this like that medical, right? Whatever. Waste bags and yeah, it's that just one. Somebody being a, a jerk, lazy and, and a jerk. Yeah, I mean. There's proper ways to That'd do this, nice and, you know, ethical ways. Who are those women? Guardians of Realm's flame. They are. Yeah, this is just... I think you're very... If we could call you guys and find out who these people are and where they came from, because um, obviously we can't have people just dumping... Right. Along with blue and white surgical paper, Many of the dismembered limbs had metal tags, and officers also found a plastic bag with the name Future Gen X on it. They have, they have some kind of tag on them. It's a whole body donation, so we do tag everything that we, you know, that we have. Ah, that's crazy, okay. After coming up with a dead end, Lieutenant Boats called someone else to try and trace Future Gen X. I need to talk to somebody who can give me information on your Wilt cadaver program for a law enforcement matter. Yes, this is April. I can help you. April, um, so I hate to be indelicate, but uh, we got a call yesterday afternoon from some folks out cutting wood south of Prescott that they had found an arm and a leg. Do you guys use medical ID tags on the appendages? We do not. Sounds like we can rule you guys out for help then. Rather than body parts dumped by a serial killer, the limbs appear to belong to cadavers donated for medical research. But a question remained. How exactly had they ended up strewn around the woods in Arizona? Still determined to find the source of the body parts, the lieutenant tried another contact. We don't tag uh, legs and arms. We do ear tags. And our bodies are never separated. They're always whole bodies. Okay. Authorities were eventually able to trace future Gen X to a Seattle address and the company's owner, Walter Harold Mitchell. Police tracked Walter to his apartment in, tripping, bro? in tripping, Scottsdale, bro? December 29th, 2020, three days after the first of the body parts were found. Hey, Walter. How's it going? I'm Detective Smith. This is Detective Franklin. We're from Yavapai County Sheriff's Office. Can we talk to you for a minute? Sure. Walter agrees, but detectives immediately notice something peculiar that he's carrying. Oh, sound like that. Sure. Carrying. You mind if we carry the rock? I just don't like you having a rock in your hand while you're walking with us. Do you have any weapons or anything on you? Uh... On your person? On my person, no. There's a very good reason Walter makes this distinction, as police will eventually find out. You used to own a company called Future Gen X? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what we're here to talk about. Okay. Have you been um, following the news at all lately? No, I have not. Okay. All right. How many bodies did you bring with you from you left Washington? Body? Oh, cadavers. Yeah, sorry about Whatever. Body part. You know what? Come on, guys. 
this is an interrogation. We came to talk to you. Yeah, that's that's an interrogation. You can call it what you want, but we just came to talk to you so we can get to the bottom of what's going on. Okay. You know what? You can talk to my lawyer. Okay. Um, what? I, I don't get it. are all over our county. And okay. have your, your company's name on them. And we're trying to figure out... Bullshit. Bullshit. Not bullshit. Why would I drive all the way down here? That's a good question. But I'm done. Okay. All right. Well, turn around and put your hands behind your back then, if you don't want to talk. Police read him his rights and found a spare apartment key on his keychain. According to news sources, it was there that they discovered a cylindrical object about eight inches long with a few sticking out of one end. With the concerning discovery of what appeared to be a pipe bomb, police cleared the area and called a bomb squad to remove the device. According to Trooper Poole, the pipe bomb was real and contained Damn. flammable powder inside. Following his arrest, Walter told a bizarre story. Bro, it was a crash out, bro. All the way, through and through. Bray, even arguing with investigators about the details of his case during a free talk agreement. What we're looking for here mostly is to try to identify um, the remains in this case so that we can try to do the right thing and get those back to their families if that's something that needs to take place. Walter was known as a body broker. Place. Walter was known as a body broker, providing donated bodies to be sold for medical education and research. He'd closed his business in April 2020, but none of this explained how the cadavers ended up in Arizona. Brunes loads a complete serving of fruits, veggies, adaptogens, vitamins, minerals, super mushrooms. That's just weird, like... When Walter was read a list of all the recovered body parts, his response to this number was unexpected, to say the least. This is not correct. Uh, I know the number was 53. 53 was the total, but minus five heads. So uh, 48. 48. 48. Yeah, because I know what the total number was. Walter took the donor's body parts in a U-Haul truck and packed them in dry ice when he moved to Arizona. After this, he kept them in a freezer in a shed north of Prescott. He only dumped the body parts in late November 2020 and later sold the freezer. We all want to know why. I think that we have some ideas why. Um, you know, we, we heard a lot of things about your finances. So the why is not financial, never has been. I, uh, you know, there are times in my life where I was motivated by finances, but this was not one of them, okay? The reason is because my industry, over the entire industry, uh, is unsafe, very unsafe. And I've been a failed whistleblower since 2002. After a thorough search of both areas was conducted, police discovered that most of the human remains appeared to be female and some were tied together with twine. If I, if I wanted to hide something, I would have dug someplace in my land or taken it someplace that had done something completely different. I wanted a platform. And because I wasn't getting a platform. And so that's the why. I hope that answers your question. Walter claimed he wanted to be a whistleblower about what he thought was improper blood testing in his industry. The body is a perfect um, ecosystem for transmitting diseases. So when you have um, 30,000 bodies a year going to private organizations and they're dissecting 150 to 200,000 tissues going around the world and they're not screening properly and they're not um, blood testing properly and I wrote a very detailed article uh, I, I don't know if you've been given that article but I'll show you where you can get access to it because it's on a LinkedIn site. You sound crazy to me bro. Funny. <laughs> Your field of work is definitely strange, but I don't want to say strange, but how this situation ended up is strange. For his reasoning, still sound kind of weird, but I mean, nobody knows the thought process with him. Nobody knows was really what his real intentions were with him and stuff like that besides him. He could just tell y'all a bunch of stuff that he feel like 
this could buy me something. Like, you know, they, they can fall for this, boom, boom, boom. But only he knows. Where I, I show and have shown over the years that the players have been doing incorrectly. Walter also wrote a fictional book called Serial Killer. Eerily, the book description reads as follows. A killer that has inner working knowledge of law enforcement, medical anatomy, and funeral protocols that ensures his success. The satisfaction he gains comes not just from the killing, but in using others to take care of disposing of the bodies That's after crazy. he is finished. While Walter was adamant that the body parts came from six people, DNA testing said otherwise. The crime lab came back and said that they can definitively say that there are nine individuals. Hmm. Okay. I there could be there could be there could be tissue and it would be the hips. Well, we only found one hip, one left hip. Okay. There's got there's there's gotta be more out there. I have five skulls, two right. I have two right arms plus shoulders, two right arms, one right shoulder, three left arms plus shoulders, one left arm, one left shoulder, three right legs, two right knees, one right foot, one left hip, four left legs, one left knee, and two left feet. Investigators found a total of 29 human body parts. You're saying there's more out there. Where did you bury it? Did you put it in a different no. location than the other stuff? It's in that vicinity, uh, very close. I'm gonna tell you flat, that was worth it. Because um, after 30 years, I wanna walk away saying I did something good for my industry and for humanity. And as silly as that sounds, I'm the moral compass in my industry and I have been. Walter Mitchell was convicted of 29 felony counts of concealing or abandoning a dead body and sentenced to concurrent two and a half year prison terms for 24 counts and a concurrent but consecutive 3.75 year term for the other five counts, totaling 6.25 years. He will be credited with 671 days served since his arrest. With the time he already served, Walter will spend just over four more years I feel like it should have been more years because I just feel like dumping body parts all over somewhere randomly like that is never the way to go about something. I don't know. It's just definitely inhumane for sure. And if people want their family member, family member body parts, you know, buried or something. That should be, you know, the right way to go about it. This man dumping body parts everywhere, like. It's pretty wild, bro. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this thing. I'm sexual. We'll make sure I run the likes up, sub, new on post notifications. You have to follow me on IG and Twitter. Links in the description. I see the IG above. It's your boy, that be Wallace. And I'm out.